cells are part of our immune system and they are everywhere. They're a bit like I always liken them to the um, the bouncers in a club. They are just inside the door um, and they are there to stop things entering the body that could cause harm. Um, but in mast cell activation syndrome, unfortunately, it's a genetic condition where these mast cells are hypervigilant and they are too reactive. So they react to chemicals and things that they should just really be ignoring um, and they can't ignore them and they create the cytokine storm and release all the hormone, uh, the, um, uh, the cytokines that they make and store. Uh, which can then have a very detrimental effect on the body, causing inflammation, etc., in various different systems. Now, the mast cells are under the skin, so some people will it'll be manifested as hives and itches and rashes and psoriasis and eczema and rosacea. Um, they're also lining the lungs, so in some people they think they have an asthma type condition. They also um, line the gut and uh, will cause all the IBS type symptoms, um, so bloating and distension, pain, wind, um, diarrhea, constipation, um, and they line our nerves as well, so they can cause a lot of neurological uh, symptoms. Um, and so in, in about 17% of the population um, in Germany, they did some some research and they think it's 17% of the population have got abnormal mast cells and it's genetic so it generally runs in families and you see uh, you have you know family histories of somebody with fibromyalgia and then somebody else has got you know chronic headaches and somebody else has got IBS and um, etc so you can usually um check you know see it in families um 80% of no, patients. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. It's quite interesting as you say yeah. that because in my family, there's fibromyalgia, there's headaches, there's eczema, particularly in the females. Yeah. Well, 80% are female. 80% are female. 80% right. will have hypermobility. So it's associated with um, you know, EDS or HEDS. And mm -hmm. um, and twenty percent, sorry, thirty percent have interstitial cystitis, which is why Professor Vic Kular uh, sort of picked it up, really. And um, and it's associated with endometriosis and with polycystic ovarian syndrome and with um, infertility and miscarriages and all sorts of things caused by inflammation. Basically, this is the, the common theme um, uh, is inflammation. And if you've got inflammation, it can cause a multitude of symptoms in different systems, which if you don't know about MCAS, you think, what? the hell is going on here you know why why has this patient got all these symptoms and typically when they have lots of tests they're all normal so then the doctors scratch their heads and say well there's nothing to find here so therefore this patient can't have anything <laughs> and yeah. it must be yeah. in their head and it must be stress and actually just because our tests that we're running are don't show up anything doesn't it either means we're not doing the right tests or we're not thinking properly about, you know, the etiology of something. So, mm. um, yeah, that's... Yeah, I mean, the, what, what I was thinking as you were speaking there is, you know, for instance, you know, I work with people with eczema. Normally, it's will just put steroid cream on your skin, mm. which, again, we know can, you know, lead to probably more serious issues than the eczema itself long term. Yeah. And then for people with things like, Cyritic arthritis or, or fibromyalgia, mm -hmm. it might be something like methotrexate, mm -hmm. which, you know, as a as a form of um, family does that come under um, chemotherapy? Right? Yeah. It's a form of chemotherapy. It's immunosuppressant. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you know, as you were saying, rather than look for the etiology of the problem, let's just give it a pharmaceutical, which yeah. we know almost all pharmaceuticals cause more side effects which means more pharmaceuticals but you're not getting to the root cause of the problem yeah absolutely and you know in america the main cause of com most common cause of death is um, heart disease the second most common cause mm. of death is cancer and the third most common cause of death is prescribed medication 
And that, that is just horrendous. And instead of looking at the cause and trying to sort out the cause, it's often just let's give something for symptomatic control, which, mm. of course, you know, can be helpful if you've got pain and you want to control mm. your symptoms. But you, you want to know what's causing it. And if you can sort out the cause of the problem, then that's going to be a much better solution, surely. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's... Um, Hmm. <laughs> but, but poor MCAS patients, you know, one of the things that breaks my heart is when I hear how so many patients have suffered for decades and they have been gaslit or ignored or told it's in their heads or sent to eating disorder clinics because they've lost weight because they can't eat very many things because they cause so much histamine in their bodies and so much of a reaction. And these poor patients, it just, it's heartbreaking. I, I had a patient this morning who's 72 years old and she cried when we were on the consultation because she said, I haven't talked about this to anybody for decades because nobody believes me and, and I don't want to make a fuss. And, you know, the whole thing, when she was growing up, she was treated by her family as if it was all in her head and she was just being awkward and actually she felt terrible and she really felt ill and they there was no sympathy or help and they actually made her very depressed which she would do wouldn't it by the time she was 18 she was seeing a psychotherapist <clears throat> and and the trauma that that caused her increased her immune response you know so trauma and stress childhood trauma and stress especially can switch on your mast cells so often in these patients, they start off with maybe infantile eczema. Um, so you can see there's a tendency to, um, to overreact for their mast cells. And then they get multiple infections, which then trigger off their mast cells more. And then if they have childhood trauma of some description, that's going to make their mast cells even more vigilant because these mast cells are trying to protect the person and keep them safe. So, you know, emotional trauma goes into that. And, um, and the more hypervigilant they become, the more symptomatic the poor patient becomes uh, and the more anxious. And of course, the stress of that can make it worse. So it can become a bit of a vicious circle. Um, often it can then be triggered again by uh, Epstein-Barr virus, by glandular fever. Um, and, um, and, and in my daughter's case, she had swine flu when she was 16 and went to college. She caught swine flu. So that really made her much worse her health became stepwise more and more um you know she had her, her health deteriorated in a stepwise fashion depending on what she you know after each infection so she had swine flu at 16 she had chicken pox as an adult at, at 1920 um and then she was so fed up of feeling so ill um that she decided to give herself superfoods in a smoothie every day, which was, of course, tomatoes, avocados, spinach, high histamine foods and fruits, mm -hmm. which she was blitzing and eating. She mm. decided she was going to do loads of exercise, which, of course, exercise causes um, MCAS as well, can increase MCAS. And um, and she was that's when she poisoned herself over a few weeks so that she then had over 30 symptoms um, and became so ill, I had to go rush over to her flat and bring her home and then nurse her for four weeks to, to make her better. And that was the beginning of the story, really, for us. But, you know, it's, it's such a common story. People who think they're doing something to make themselves healthier, if they have this condition, are actually making themselves worse. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's very confusing if you don't really understand what's going on. It's very frightening. Yeah. Mm. So you said... 17% of the population have yeah. MCAS. Yes. So I'm guessing it's more than 17% of females and less than 17% of men. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know be... what the differences are? Well, if if it's 80% female, so you'd expect 20% of the cases to be male and 80%. So it's 80% of 17% <laughs> is female. Mm. I'll let you work that yeah. one out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so it's yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, it's probably it's probably probably in the low twenties for females and probably in the low teens for men. I'm yeah. Guessing. Yeah. So yeah, so it's it is common. And it was it was my MCAS 
um, knowledge and background that um, enables me to to realise how to treat acute COVID in um, the spring of 2020. Um, because one of the um, there are, you know the the mast cells make and store over a thousand different chemicals. We don't even know what some of these cytokines do. But the ones we do know about are things like histamine and heparin and elastase 2 and so on. And they are very potent in very small doses. So they don't have to be produced in a very big dose, high dose, to have a big effect on the body. And that makes it quite difficult to detect them because also they are very transient. They can be released by the mast cells and then they're, they're metabolized away and they're gone. So you could be too late looking for them in a blood test or something, you see. So, but um, there were there were these reports. Do you remember the reports were coming, these pathology re reports were coming out of Italy in the spring of 2020. And they said, oh, it's very strange. In the, in the lung tissue that we were looking at in these post-mortems, um, we were seeing um, a breakdown of membranes we were seeing bleeding, we were seeing clotting, and we were seeing hyperinflammation. And when I read that, I was like, well, that's MCAS. 